Cursed Episode 7, we've got Nimue becoming the Fae Queen, Arthur and Gawain facing down certain death, Merlin switching sides, and Pym the Destroyer leading the Vikings into battle against the Red Paladins. Or at least that's how I interpreted it. Uh, I'm kind of really enjoying the little Pym side story that she's just kind of like on this Viking ship. No clue what she's doing. She's like their healer all of a sudden. And like this episode, she's off with them to go raid a paladin camp. It's uh, just kind of hilarious. And I don't think it's intended as comic relief, but that's what I'm taking it as. And I really, I really enjoy all that. Uh, really, the big story here today is Nimue and her her declaration of be, being the Fae Queen. Uh, this is a weird episode for her up until the very ending. You know, there she's out with Morgana and Kaze. They're running away from uh, the Pendragon Knights. They enter into these caves that are controlled by the Spider Queen Celiac and uh, then we just have this scene where she just chucks the sword into a pit and it was it was very bizarre like uh, don't totally know what was going on there and then Morgana goes to find it herself and I was like what like why wouldn't they just all go together like, why does it make more sense to send one of them off alone in this weird cave? Uh, was a was a little silly, but that was our little plot point to get Morgana alone with her now dead girlfriend, and to have that spider enter into her mouth and her to learn that she could become the greatest sorcerer in the land uh, seems to be kind of changing the direction of what Morgana's story is going to be and uh, I, I kind of like it. I kind of like that she's she's uh, switching it up and and you know coming into that power because you know we know Morgana as as basically like Merlin's sort of adversary or equal depending on, on the tale but so far she's not really had magical powers so kind of cool that now she does. Uh, we also got to see Merlin switch sides today. Uh, the Pendragons have kind of, they're done with Merlin. So what does he do? He's got this ace in the hole where he knows the midwife that knows that Uther isn't the trueborn heir to the throne. And he takes that w midwife straight to Cumber the other Pendragon who is probably the true heir to the throne and he's uh sort of inv invading with all the Viking dudes right now so that's kind of kind of cool interested to see where that all goes uh Arthur and Gawain uh we saw them sort of end last episode with with getting ambushed by red paladins uh this episode, they spend most of the time trapped in this mill before the paladins burn it down. And then Nimue shows up to save the day. Uh, I'm not sure how she managed to get there or had any clue where they were. You know, there was one little vision where she's like, Arthur's in trouble. And then five seconds later, is just there. Uh, I guess she's magic, so we'll allow it. We'll, we'll let that one slide. But she kind of unleashed her, her magic on the Red Paladins, summoned this evil cloud of smoke, which basically made them all kill each other. And uh, then headed back to become the Fae Queen. All right, I think that's it for this episode. Um, not, I, th I don't think we have too many episodes left in this season. So I'm going to guess that they're probably not wrapping everything up before the end of the season. And, uh, you know, I've enjoyed this so far, so I'd be all right if there's a second season. But that's it for this episode, and I will be back soon with episode 8. We'll see ya.